welcome back. We left off last overlooking Mount Sanford. Uh, we're on our way to Anchorage. This is our second day in Alaska, and halfway between there and Anchorage is a glacier. It's called Matanuska Glacier. It is the biggest glacier you can drive to in North America. Uh, it's 27 miles long, uh, four miles wide. These things are just fascinating. They, they look like rivers, and but they're solid. But they actually act like rivers too. This moves about a foot a day, if you could believe it. Uh, it's a valley glacier, and unlike other glaciers in like Canada and Alaska, um, the terminus hasn't changed. Um, it's not receding like some of the other ones. I can't describe to you how amazing it was to drive on a highway that had no potholes or frost heaves. We decided to overnight in the Cabela's parking lot in uh, Anchorage because that's where our appointment was in the morning at GMC. Um, when we got there, there was a, a car club meeting there, just you know, doing their car club stuff, and I, uh, of course, had to get involved and uh, get some cool shots. But good guys, uh, had a good time. We lived some old days, pre-Fast and Furious days we had. Looks like they're done. All right, we're at the uh, GMC dealer. We got uh, that check engine light in um, while we were in Banff, and it turns out it was, um, they think it's probably the DF pump, and they said, if that goes, then we'll go into limp mode, and it'll be a really bad deal. So they're gonna change it out for us. It's all under warranty. Uh, the emissions is under warranty for 100,000 miles in this thing. So we are at an airport. I don't even know if I'm in frame here. Um, we got an unhook, and they said they're gonna Get us on our way so which is pretty awesome so they said by five we should be on our way down to homer at least four hours hanging out which is no big deal we'll watch some uh we'll watch some planes take off Okay, so we are in Alaska. We are in Homer, mm -hmm. and we made it. We did. And it is, it's awesome. Everybody has been ridiculously nice. Everybody we've come in contact with has just, they're, they're good people up here. So hospitable. Like, like we went to the GMC dealer, so what is it? Alaska Sales and Service. They bent over backwards to do everything we, we for us. We called them like two days before we needed Insane. to be there. And and they got us in. So here's what's wrong. Here's what was wrong with the truck. Right. So we got the code P21DD. When we were in Banff. Um, and it says they replaced our emissions reduction fluid tank reservoir and something about a, a heater. Right. Um, they originally thought it might have been uh, the DEF pump, mm -hmm. which it, it could have been. They, it looks like I this don't know. is a they whole replaced a bunch kit of parts. or something. Yeah. And they were able to do a couple recalls while we were there. That we didn't even know about. Yeah, it was just awesome. It's just really nice. So the truck's good. Uh, we made our way down here to Homer, pulling into the farm. Um, just a little bit stressful uh, at first because it's just a one lane road. Um, and the spot they cleared, uh, we can't fit into. Yeah. So we had to turn around. Um, and it was raining when we showed up. I'm going to show you a time lapse here. It's a of, dirt road. Of, like <laughs> trying to turn our trailer around on a one lane road. Wow. Um, so we weren't able to park next to their property like we wanted to. Right. Um, so we had to go a little bit further down the road to a spot. Beautiful spot. Beautiful spot. Gorgeous. Um, overlooking the mountains and everything is where we are right now. Well, we are here at the Callahan's farm. Ashton and Amanda have invited us to come and help out a little bit. They own Callahan Fishing Company which is a salmon fishing company based out of Homer. And usually uh, Amanda is out fishing with Ashton during this part of their crazy season, but two weeks ago she had their first child. Um, so she's home with the baby and they have uh, a very beautiful off the grid farm with cows and goats and chickens and uh, uh, pigs, all kinds of fun creatures. They got everything. They got everything. Um, and a garden, and so she just needs a little bit of help tending to that. So we've been here for a few days. We've already started morning chores and evening chores to help her out. And, um, and my job specifically is definitely the hardest. <laughs> Look at that baby. 
tough job, but somebody's got to do it. Um, honestly, though, these types of situations and experiences are by far our absolute favorite. Being able to go and volunteer at a place and really like dig into a property is it has become our favorite part of traveling. There's just something very different when you can um, connect with the land and the people in a location. Yeah, it's it's much more of an experience. Mm -hmm. It's much more uh, enriching because you're mm -hmm. you're just you're not just seeing something. You're ex more experiencing something. Right. Right, exactly. And even beyond that, as parents, these are the situations when we volunteered where we get to see our kids grow. The girls are are learning new things. Um, they're they're able to, to connect with something in a very different way, in tangible way, because they're actually being a part of helping. So I think that um, it's for us, it's being able to watch them mature like before our eyes. I feel like we're watching yeah. our kids grow in a way we've never watched them before. And, and they just keep seeing um, different lifestyles across the continent. You know, not just one spot, you know, they're, mm -hmm. we're, we're going around, they're just seeing how people live in different areas, in, in different lifestyles. So the cool thing about Homer is the spit. Uh, and I can't wait to explore that when we get a little bit more time. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if we end up going fishing. Um, yeah because I think he's down a guy recently, um, so he might need to go fishing, so I may have to go fishing. He might have to, like it's gonna be a real, <laughs> it's gonna be a real job for him to go salmon fishing in Alaska. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, whether it happens or not, uh, we'll see. Totally unprepared, but we're going fishing. He's going fishing. That's all right. He's gonna leave us for a little bit. So we're driving down the Homer Spit to Callahan Fishing. And Ashton's gonna take Corey fishing for over 24 hours. They won't be back till tomorrow night. Corey gets to sleep on a boat. hear me right now but we are scouting out right now some locations so when it opens tomorrow we'll be ready so that's what we're doing and I'm gonna be handling these nets I guess is my job so we're spending the night out here and hope we catch a lot of fish tomorrow minute tonight the family that we are helping out here in Homer Alaska asked Corey if he wanted to go fishing to which he responded absolutely I want to go fishing I just didn't realize that he would have to leave at five o'clock tonight and he won't be back until about 11 tomorrow night <laughs> um, but they may be leaving for weeks at a time soon depending on where the fish are running so this might have been his only opportunity and he needed to go it is the first time that I'm staying in the RV alone. So we had a girls night tonight, which was awesome. We ate lots of chocolate and watched TV and <laughs> in our pajamas. I'm gonna head off to bed. The girls are sound asleep. We're gonna get up and do our AM chores that we've been doing, feeding goats and chickens and pigs and cows. 
at the farm and uh, we probably are gonna head into Homer and do some laundry. So Alaska is just full of firsts for us. We're gonna go to a laundromat and I'm going to stay in the RV without my husband. That's that. We'll let you know how everything goes tomorrow. I guess we can start fishing here at 6. It's very strict. Um, there's certain zones that you can only go in. Where we're sitting now, there's fish jumping all over, but they can't fish here. Past that point right there is where we can fish. So, we're going to get after it in maybe an hour or so. Okay, we made it through the night. The only exception is that we did run out of one of our tanks of propane and I learned how to switch over to the other one. Thank you, YouTube. And of course this morning the generator is out of gas, I think. So our batteries are pretty low and I need to get those uh, charged a little bit with our generator. So the plan was to run it for about an hour this morning and I'm gonna try to fill it with gas and hopefully that's what the issue is and we'll get our batteries charged. Corey, I hope you're coming home soon. Good morning. We're headed out to take care of the animals at the farm this morning and show you what we do for our AM chores. You guys ready? Yeah. Release the birds. That's the least favorite part. Yeah. <laughs> we were greeted every morning by the Callahan's dog, Loki, who was very excited to get some attention since mommy was a little preoccupied with his new little sister. When we first got to the farm, there was a list of instructions on the inside of the chicken coop. And the number one thing for morning chores was in all caps, release the birds. This became Lily's absolute favorite chore of the morning opening up the chicken coop and releasing the chickens out into the yard. We had so much fun, especially the girls, getting to know the animals on the farm, feeding the chickens every morning and taking care of all the rest of the animals, including the baby goat, Maggie. We absolutely love watching our girls have these experiences, and we hope that it will instill in them a greater sense of responsibility, compassion, and selflessness. Being on the water for a sunset and a sunrise on the same boat trip, uh, just, it's been magical. Uh, the, last night, the the fish were just jumping all over the place. The water was dead calm, uh, just so quiet. The mountains in the background, uh, it's just indescribable. But let's talk about fishing. I'm on the Hanta Yo. It's a 46 foot long purse seining boat. Uh, purse seining is the method that uses a second skiff boat um, that draws the line out and then makes a big circle back around to the boat. Uh, the line is a quarter mile long. It's about 45 feet deep. You might see me standing around every once in a while not knowing what to do uh, because I really don't. I truly was learning the ropes here. Uh, so there's a long rod and it's called the plunger and it's, it's plunged down into the water um, at the end of the nets and under the boat to keep the fish from going under the net or under the boats just to keep them into the nets. So that's what's going on there. Uh, so he's coming back around and grabs the end of the line and then hooks it up to the rigging so then we can start pulling or cinching the purse together because not only does the top come around but the bottom is cinched underneath so the fish can't swim down. It's a four-man operation and my job was to stack the cork side of the nets. Um, the other side, the orange side, is the leads. And you do this so then when you pull it out for the next set, nothing gets tangled. Um, so that's the two net jobs. And then the skiff man in the skiff, um, he's in charge of the boat while we have lines out because there's no control of the boat. He's in charge of that and then the captain.
there's a dizzying amount of ropes and pulleys and winches and and trying to figure out what goes where is like is a giant puzzle and it's just it is fascinating to to watch and learn um i mean look at all those fish it's it was such a pleasure to be part of this this whole operation to just to see hands on um how things go um and you really can understand how you can get hurt very easily so as soon as you catch the salmon you also need to cut the gills of all the salmon and that is for a better tasting fillet and a better looking fillet so this is just us counting the fish as we throw them down in the hole just to get an idea of you know how the day is going um, i'm way oversimplifying this process and, and what the jobs are for what everybody does um, but you, you might get the idea um, this is not a how to so get the deck all cleaned up and you just reset start all over again we did several sets um, throughout the day um, I, I pointed the GoPro way too far down but you kind of get the idea of pulling back into port um, fascinating day very exciting I am super glad to have this guy back uh, we don't do separations very often um, mostly because it was involuntarily forced upon us from the military when we first got married Corey was in the Navy and by the second anniversary um, he had been gone for 13 months on a ship so that's like over half <laughs> it was a lot of time separated when we first got married Good so to be back also because I wasn't fully prepared and they weren't fully prepared for me um, the, <laughs> the rain gear didn't didn't quite fit so they had like extra small men's rain gear. I had we trashed those jeans they were all bloody and wet and they they were I knew they were gonna get wrecked so I, mm -hmm. I wore a crappy pair well I'm glad he's back I learned a lot while he was gone so it was a good learning lesson for me and it made me appreciate a whole lot more all the things you do for uh, us yeah. honey. so a couple nights ago we started hearing some scratching uh, our first <laughs> first critter it kept us up all night long I could not catch the silly little thing What's and it it's eating? like What's it's it just chewing? it's just the worst noises uh, so it's awful we made some traps we have a mouse in the RV ask Corey how happy he is about it we got to buy some stuff some actual traps so we're gonna go buy some actual traps until we're gonna, then, we're gonna start with this. We are gonna start. With You're gonna get him, honey. Oh, he's a goner. Weight distribution correct, please. Come on, peanut this butter. Is precise science here. It's like ten times the peanut butter we need for this project. Excellent. That's kind of like how the Nickersons do everything. All right, this is gonna work. <laughs> This is my house. I have to defend it. No stinking away. Unbelievable. Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. I'm so sorry. You cannot stay in our RV, though. Oh, <laughs> I can't believe it worked. We got the mouse, uh, and I want to know how many of you thought that that was not going to work. <laughs> I didn't think that was going to work. Anyways, that mouse is gone, and I am a really, really happy person right now. <laughs> He's much happier. <laughs> we want to give a huge thank you to Ashton and Amanda for having us here for the fishing and the animals and the baby, um, everything. We just had a wonderful time. If you are interested at all in getting to know more about their business, you can go to CallahanFishingCompany.com, and we will have that link in the description as well as as um, all of their social media. Um, you can contact them through any of those mediums. Yes, and they ship anywhere. Anywhere. So if you want some real Alaska stuff, contact them. Definitely. And go to their website and check out their our process on how the fish gets <laughs> to you because it's amazing. We are headed out to the Homer Spit for one night on the beach tomorrow and we are really looking forward to our first night ever camping on the ocean. Where are we? Um, yeah, we're on the spit. spit. Homer spit. We just left the farm and we decided uh, we'd spend a night on the spit here before we started heading up towards uh, Kenai and then uh, Anchorage. So we're here on the beach. We're going to do some walks, have a fire, 
Can we cook some sausages or something? Uh, what do you guys think? Awesome. Yeah, this is pretty awesome. So this is my creation. It's like a hole in it. So there's chocolate at the bottom. Nobody cares. Graham you cracker, chocolate, it. and then marshmallow it. around it. We need to see the layers. <laughs> 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 we need to have fire for She's choking on her marshmallow. How good oh was it? Gosh. I cannot put it to words. <laughs> but I can put it into sentences. How long do you got? <laughs> a little bit right here. <laughs> Where is it? No. <laughs> I think it's like all over there. <laughs> Why are we burning our only Yeah, two don't, sticks? don't burn the stick yet. Louis, Get the ah, stick. What the heck, Louis? I just, <laughs> you just I broke that stuck. one. Just doing a line from Laura. This is for the cutest guy I ever saw. No, no. I got one of these for the cutest little guy I ever saw. Got me dumb. Oh. Wait, wait, no, Daddy, you have to do the Lorax. All right. Take it away from me and say, <laughs> I'm gonna eat this, but I'm highly offended by it. And I'm gonna eat this, but I'm highly offended by it. <laughs> Am I supposed to eat it? Yeah. We're in a southern accent. <laughs> <laughs> a waste of marshmallows. I don't like marshmallows. <laughs> All right, this place is awesome. Yeah. My, my new favorite place. We're right here on the beach. Uh, I think... Uh, I think we're heading to Anchorage tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, the tires on the uh, RV are kind of making me nervous. Those rear tires, they're yeah. getting kind of bare. So we're going to go back up to Anchorage, restock, get those taken care of. And there's actually a uh, meetup with yeah. Less Drunk More Journey and Keeper Daydream. So we're going to check that out while we're there. Yeah, and then we're going to head back down here because our time in Homer is not yeah, done. Yeah, I'm not done here yet. After one night on this beach, we got to come back. Yeah. Uh, so I think we're going to leave you with some photos of uh, some of our time here. We'll see you soon.